Hey guys, welcome to the 86th C programming tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue looking at recursion. And in the previous video's description, I left a link to a couple practice problems. And in this video, we're going to be going over the first practice problem. And that is as follows. Write a recursive function called sum digits to return the sum of all the digits in a given integer value. Use a helper function if necessary. We're actually not gonna be using a helper function for uh, our solution, I'm honestly not even sure how you would, but anyways, we're just going to go ahead and solve this problem. So if you weren't really paying attention, what we need to do is just simply calculate the sum of all the digits in a certain number. So um, let's say we had some input number like this. We had 237. Well, our goal is to just add up the individual digits of this number. So 2 plus 3 plus 7, which is 12. So yeah, that's just all our function needs to do. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do for this is just go ahead and write the prototype for our function. So since we don't really wanna be dealing with any negatives, we're just gonna go ahead and make both the return type and the input value unsigned. So we're just gonna say unsigned int um, sum digits and uh, you know the first parameter will just be unsigned as well, like I said before. So unsigned int and I'll just call it num. Okay, so now that we have our prototype, really the next thing that we need to do is come up with our base case. So what would be the easiest input value for us to solve for? And that's simply zero. If they pass in zero, we just return zero. And that's just what our base case is going to be. So if num equals zero, then we're just gonna go ahead and say return zero. Simple as that. And this right here is going to be our base case, and that's what I'll go ahead and label it as, so base case. Anyways, uh, from the previous tutorial, remember that the base case is what stops the recursion. So if we didn't have a base case in our function, our function would just keep calling itself over and over again, and it would never end. And that's obviously not what we want. We need to have a base case so that our function can return and give us a value. So the next thing that we actually need to do is just come up with uh, we'll not really come up with it. We need to solve a few simple problems first. And that first problem being, how do we extract a digit from a number? So how do we extract this last digit right here inside of this number? And believe it or not, it's just really simple. And all you really have to do is just take your number and mod it by 10. That's all that's going to do. And remember that modulus is simply the remainder. So it's dividing 237 by 10 and then getting the remainder, and that would just be seven. So yeah, that's just all you have to do in order to get the last digit in a number, well, a base 10 number. And then the next thing that we have to do is figure out how to chop off the last digit in a number. And that too is very simple. All we have to do is just take our number and divide it by 10. And since we're dealing with integers here, it just chops off everything after the decimal place. So even though this is tw this would be 23.7, it's actually going to give us 23. It doesn't round it at all. It just chops off everything after the decimal place. So if I go in the Windows calculator right here, and if you have the uh, view set to programmer, it'll go ahead and do integer division. It won't do anything with decimal places or fractions or anything like that. So if I just take our number uh, 237, and divide it by 10, that should just give us 23. And it does. So 23. All right, and that's really all that we need in order to solve our problem. So uh, this is exactly what we're going to do in our program right here. The first thing that we're going to do is just chop off the last digit from our number. So we're going to get 7. And then what we're going to do is just add that last digit to the summation of um, the digits in the remainder or the, the rest of the number. So we just say 7, which is the last digit, plus some digits of, or yeah, digits of 23. And that will work for us flawlessly. So we can just go back in here and say return um, num mod 10 we're just chopping off the last digit and then we're just going to go ahead and add the last digit to the sum of the rest of the digits in the number so we can just say sum digits 
of num divided by 10. And remember, we have to divide it by 10 so that we're not adding the same digit twice. If I didn't divide this by 10 right here, it would never hit this base case because we would never end up passing through zero. So that's why we have to chop off that last digit that we already added right here. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and follow this through step by step so you can actually analyze what exactly is going on. And instead of using a three digit number for the example, I'm gonna go ahead and use a two digit number so I'm not just writing out a bunch of stuff way too much. So we're gonna say that our example input is um, 53. So 53 is our input example right here. And uh, the first thing that it does is it compares the input number to zero. Is 53 zero? No, it's not. So it's gonna come down here and do this code. So it's gonna chop off the last digit, which gives us three. So 53 mod 10 is three. And then it's going to divide 53 by 10 to chop off that last digit divided by 10 and it'll give us five. And then it's just going to take um, three plus the sum of all the digits in five. So the sum of five, and then it's gonna, uh, you know, obviously make another call. So it comes down here, it does five mod 10, or yeah, mod 10, which gives us five. And then it's going to divide five by 10 to chop off the last digit, which gives us zero. And then what it'll do is it'll just go ahead and say five plus the sum of all the digits in zero. And this is when it hits our base case. We pass through zero right here. It compares this input number to zero. And since zero is zero, it returns zero. So it comes back from this function call and it performs this addition right here. So it does five plus zero, which gives us five. And that in turn will return it'll return from this function call and then it will be able to perform this addition. So it'll do three plus five, which is eight. And then it'll return from that function call and give it back to the caller. So now let's just go ahead and test this function out to make sure that it works. So we're just gonna say printf mod i end the line. And then we're just gonna go ahead and call some digits on 53 which should equal eight, since five plus three is obviously eight. And there we go, it worked perfectly. And we can just test it on some bigger numbers to make sure that it works with those as well. So we'll say um, 999, that should give us 27. And there we go, it did. All right, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I think we'll go ahead and uh, go over that second practice problem. Alright, so see you guys.